Today's Friday, September 3rd, 2021. My name is Alex. I'm your host for the Corporate Cowboys podcast. This episode, damn, I'm just recapping, I guess. I don't even remember when the I don't even remember when the last episode was. Had to have been at least a week, I think, when I was on the road. Fuck it. You know, this episode will be about hard assets. Because I know what it's I know what it's like to be mobile. Um and I can I also appreciate those individuals who uh who live on the road, who put in massive amounts of work on the road and uh just have a fucking <clears throat> a studio to live in. A small house, nothing major. That's been a goal of mine at least. I wanna be I want to be at the level where I'm able to handle millions in transactions and really only make a couple grand a year. I'll settle for, with the way the climate is, maybe a hundred grand a year. You know, because that's got to, that's some of that, most of that is going to be going towards expenses if I can't uh, expense it through the organization. But hard assets in themselves uh, many times are just for personal gratification, personal satisfaction, and they're liable to depreciate. Don't get caught up in the material world. If anything, I mean, you could probably have a storage unit off-site with a couple of uh, important items the absolute necessary but you don't want to go overboard with the prepping some folks say that you got to have food to last you six months to a year if we ever end up in a situation where you have to where you have to store more food than you could possibly get from just planting in the ground or from networking with a neighbor, you're fucked, bro. You're fucked. If you have to store mo- if you have to store months worth of provisions, nah, you're fucked, bro. I, I don't think there's there's coming back from that. It's gonna it's gonna get to a point where confidences and trust is gonna disintegrate, especially in uh in a great number, a great number of neighborhoods around the nation because there isn't a whole lot of community trust anymore. There's a lot of movement of people. People treat themselves on a professional level without even thinking about it. Very few, <clears throat> a limited number, a limited number of people actually get together and uh, fellowship I guess we'll call it communion together on a personal level, on a personal level, not even on a social level, because even the social level carries with it some ego on on a social level. You're not only trying to have fun, but you're trying to uh, create fun, create a vibe. Doing that can be dangerous. Doing that can be uh, unhealthy. Whereas if you're able to communicate with folks on a personal level and really break through that professional, uh, really break through on a professional level, hold on, break through the professional scheme, I want to say, break through the professional shell, the professional veil, the corporate veil, break through that and don't even, don't pay attention to the social, but the personal, when you're able to communicate with one another on a human level, just basic, back to the basics, you'll find that a lot of human interaction is very much transactional. A lot of it is, you know, give and take. A lot of it is mutual exchange. It should be mutual exchange. 
especially when we have so much to gain from one another. It's no use just just taking it. It's, it's no use being adverse. It, it's no use being. It's no use being a predator. Like that sort of crime only pays in the very very short term. And a lot of individuals don't live long enough to see, you know, to to see fruits from their labor. If they're even expecting fruits, because some motherfuckers are, you know, will burn bridges while they're on them. And that's pretty much what they expected. They go out in a fucking suicidal manner, suicide by society, (laughs) not suicide by cop. Suicide by society. So having more than you can manage does exist. I mean, technically, we're all meant to be stewards of this world, of this planet, of this giant garden that we've been handed over by whatever entity created it or if it formed on its own then it by itself has a divine what is it a uh, a smart design an intelligent design even if it did grow on its own we just have to recognize that that it has patterns It has rules, it has principles that must be followed. And keeping too much for oneself, having more than one can manage, is uh, similar to that, I think it's a parable in some holy text, some holy scripture. It's a parable of a man, no, it's three, three individuals who are given what are called 10 talents. So there's 30 talents total, right? And ta- I guess talents for for the sake of this parable, let's just say they're dollars, $30. There's $30 total. There's three individuals. So each individual has $10, right? Three times 10 is 30. Well, the, uh, the grantor, the, the, person who granted these individuals their ten dollars each says uh do with them you know to uh to improve or you know care for these care for these talents care for this money care for these dollars and when i return you know i will i'll get them back from you and i'm probably butchering it here and there i'm probably cutting it because i don't dive too deep into uh text into holy scripture like that i get the uh, lessons and i get the morals a lot of it i've lived through and have learned from life experience from the actual world experience and uh sometimes i find myself cracking it just read a couple pages read a story a short story and uh you know from whatever text i pick up but in our case these 30 dollars one individual takes their ten dollars and gambles them away. Gambles them away. Fucking loses. Loses his ten dollars immediately. And well, you know that person fucked up. Why? Because the grantor said, take this ten dollars and care for them. Take care of them. And uh, he fucking let them go. He lost them to the house or wherever he went to go. Place his bet. So he fucked up. The second person dug a hole. Dug a hole in the ground. Dug a hole in the earth. Put his $10 in a little box. Like in a little treasure chest. And buried them. And then when it came time. To return the $10. He unearthed them. He unearthed them. He uncovered them. He dug them back up and handed them over. 
But for the sake of this parable, let's just say the ten dollars rotted underground. Fuck it, he lost ten dollars too, bro. So at that point, either when he dug them up and he handed them over, inflation had got so bad that they ain't even worth ten dollars anymore. So you know, it's just been stationary. It's been immobilized. So nothing has really happened. And with the ten dollars, he fucked up. The third person takes his ten dollars and invests them. He invests them in a business. And from those $10, he's able to flip them. He's able to flip them into $20. So he doubled the money that he was tasked to take care of. And when the grantor returned, he asked for his 10 back. And uh, this is where it gets kind of grave for me. Whether or not he handed over the 10 or he gave over the 20 and saying you know like look at how well i i cared for your 10 talents for for your 10 dollars i made them into 20 and i don't know if he fucking got paid out or what or he had to hand over the 20 bucks because the 10 were not his to begin with. who the fuck knows right my point is that <laughs> my point is that yes yes you do ought to invest you should invest and only keep enough to carry yourself over for another run right you don't want to you don't want to bury your money because you'll fucking die and you can't take your money with you your money ought to be working your money ought to be moving and you might think oh because i have it sitting in some other account and it can't be touched by taxes that that you're better off for it and you're not. You 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 won't be. Why? Because your money still isn't doing anything. Whoever you think you're going to leave your money to, I'm already putting it out there. I'm I'm putting it out there. Let it be known that they will be found. That they will be tricked. Not tricked. Tricked out. Maybe they'll be tricked out. Because it gets to a point where even rich motherfuckers get pimped. Now, not in like the perverse sense of like beaten and abused, but they get represented. They have to pick up representation. And now a rich motherfucker doesn't want to get their hands dirty. Doesn't want to really do dirt. They have people to do that for them. They also have people that will represent them. In matters that require their executive decision making, let's say. If they have an attorney, if they have a consigliere, if they have some kind of counsel, some kind of legal counsel for themselves or their organization or their family, if they if they run their family like an organization, then they're gonna need somebody who can go out into the world for them as a as an intermediator as an intermediary as a point person for managing the business end of things now that ideally would be a position that i would go out for i'd love to do that why because i like making business work but at the same time I wouldn't want to work for somebody. I wouldn't want to work under someone else's thumb. I'd rather work with people, with individuals. If I can make business happen, it's going to be on a mutual accord, with mutual benefits, with terms that are advantageous to both sides and all disadvantages mitigated and accounted for. Why? Because fucking business is never ending. You can't externalize a, a, a negative repercussion, a negative result to your operation forever. It's like the quintessential, it's like, <sighs> that is the definition of running from evil. And yeah, I bring this back. I remember when I was younger, I was always told to uh, stay out of the way of evil. Don't go out so late at night. There isn't 
anything to do out there for me that late, right? Coming from parents, from guardians, aunts and uncles. And they would say, you know, don't don't go out there, waste your time. There isn't anything for you out there past 10 or whatever. It's just bad people. There's evil people. If you see evil people, stay out of their way. And in my mind, I'm thinking, why would you stay out of the way? Why would you not address that issue? Why would you not take care of it then and there instead of letting the issue grow, letting that problem fester? Fucking beats me, bro. It beats me. If you have a negative externality, that's like an opportunity to continue growing business, to continue meeting new people and shaking more hands, creating better a, a, a better support network for growth, mind you, for innovation, mind you. Who the fuck knows, bro? I mean, <laughs> I know. <laughs> visit us, visit the page on Instagram if you haven't. That's incorporating underscore associates dot i a uh no it's incorporating dot associates underscore i a you can definitely subscribe to the patreon that's corporate cowboys podcast keep this operation non-profit and it will be until somebody dies <laughs> you can uh there's a paypal link somewhere there is a cash app and a venmo also you can send one-time donations or you could subscribe send a, a monthly a monthly thing but um you want to gamble you you want to fucking place your bets place your bets on us you're gonna throw away your money at the in the fucking house anyways right you're gonna throw away your money in 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 the, in the parlor why not put your money where your intentions are yeah you you can bet your money on us you can bet your money on us. It's not like you can't see what we're doing. You see us post. You hear the podcast. You hear the episodes come across. We're busy. We're doing things. At the same time, we're just making business look good. We're making business better. We're doing business better. Have a nice weekend.